Welcome to Wikipedia Radio. Wikipedia Radio is sponsored by Equipping the Persecuted. Galatians 6.10 says, Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. Equipping the Persecuted embodies this verse as they aid and equip some of the most precious of the household of faith in Nigeria. They give physical aid, spiritual training, and they set up alarm towers to alert of dangerous invasions. They even build schools and orphanages in Nigeria. If there is a need for persecuted Christians in Nigeria, equipping the persecuted meets it. And you can partner with this worthwhile ministry and find out more about this worthwhile ministry at equippingthepersecuted.org. Once again, that's equippingthepersecuted.org. Well, I'm your host, Pastor Sam. And in today's episode of Wikipedia, we are going to get into something very interesting as we have an incredible interview to bring to you that we did with Kevin McGarry. But before we get into that, let me introduce to you also my co-host, Kyle Witt, Mr. Witt himself. Kyle, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty good today, Sam. God is on the throne, so we don't have to worry. Despite the the advances of wokeness, we know that God wins in the end, so let's fight back against it. That's right. Amen. You know, we've read the back of the book and we win, and that doesn't mean we sit back on our laurels, but that means we take up the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and we fight. Amen. And we do stand against wokeness. And, uh, I, you know, I'm glad that we're not the only ones that are doing it. But there's also here Kevin McGarry is one of those guys who stand up and doing this. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Wait, any thoughts on the interview real quick before we run it? I just anyone that's listening, please, please stay tuned. Uh, stay tuned for the whole thing. If you miss this when it airs, you can find us online and in an audio or video format, searching Wikipedia on YouTube or any of your favorite podcast platforms, iTunes, Amazon, Google, uh, Spotify. But please listen to this interview. It was phenomenal and it digs in deep. So it really requires you to listen to the whole thing because you will get so much out of it. Easily one of my favorite interviews that we've got to do on this program. Uh, It was one of mine, too. But instead of talking about it, let's let you guys listen to it. So stay tuned. Nigerian Christians are being driven from their home and killed. As radical Islam encroaches from the north, Christians are being persecuted on a daily basis, forced from their homes and put into camps. Equipping the persecuted delivers food, medicine, and critical aid after these attacks. They provide support for widows and orphans of murdered Christians. Make a contribution of $19 per month or more at equippingthepersecuted.org. Make a difference in the life of a persecuted Christian in Nigeria. Thank you for joining us today and joining us today. It is a privilege and an honor to introduce to you a a friend of the program, somebody who I believe is going to become a great friend of the program, uh, and that is the co-founder of Every Black Life Matters, Kevin McGarry. Kevin, how are you doing today? Doing great, Pastor Sam. How are you? I'm doing well. Now, it's not just that you're a co-founder of Every Black Life Matters, but you also have a YouTube channel. In fact, I think it's uh, it's represented there in the back. Y'all woke up. Is that is that how that goes? That is. Y'all woke up university, breaking off some truth, making sure we're getting everybody awakened to what's going on around here. So, yes. Oh, that, that is awesome. So you're going to have to go and check out that YouTube channel. I'm going to have to go check out that YouTube channel. Hit a subscribe there for it. Yes. And uh, we're, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. And you're doing uh, daily shorts over there. So I'm excited to check that out. Um, also, you've recently written a, a new book. In fact, it's it's like hot off the press. Hot off the uh, press. came out here. Yes. Uh, w- when was the official release date? It was, uh, let's see, it was ac- exactly two weeks ago that we actually – had it so it was like wow. August fifteenth or something like that. Wow! And, so I mean, uh, it is yeah. it is hot, really off the hot. Press. Off the press, so, yeah. And it is called Woked Up. Now, I, I have to be honest here. You know, being the being Wikipedia Radio and everything like that, some people might be listening and going, "Now, wait a minute here. Black Lives Matter, yeah, Woked yeah, Up, right. everything like that." Uh, so, so let's just get it out of the way. Are are, are you woke? <laughs> uh, no, uh, I stand against wokeness a hundred percent because if you read the subtitle of the book, it says finally putting an ax to the tap root. So the main fundamental root 
of white supremacy and racism in America. Now, here's the deal with wokeism is that if you it, it is principally founded, it is principally rooted in white supremacy and racism. So this book actually literally takes you through history to show you where all this woke madness came, comes from and how to appropriately address it. Uh, let's face it, our kids, our, our grandkids, our, our nieces, nephews, and family and, and community members are being dragged into this sort of woke phenomena. And a lot of us, and especially us people of faith, and especially pastors, we don't know how to deal with it. We don't even know what it is. A lot of pastors just go in with culture, even though wokeism is right. purely demonic, they go in right with it. As you know, you guys do this all the time. So so, uh, so this book is vital. It's, it's vital, it's important. Glad to talk to you more about it, but yeah, so that's that's what the book is about. It's about exposing wokeism and wokesters, if you will, and uh, mm. what they're what they're rooted in. So, yeah, no, that that is awesome. That is an important book, and of course, uh, people can get a copy there at your website, which is everyblm.com. Once again, it's everyblm.com. Now, I, I I have to ask you here because I'm sure some people are wondering out, out uh, in our audience. What in the world, why would you choose BLM, uh, Every Black Life Matters? Uh, don't you know, Kevin, that, that BLM, um, that they are a Marxist group who wants to go in to destroy the family. Yeah. Why did you choose that name? And what does Every Black Life Matters do? What, Excellent. what separates Excellent. these two these two entities? Yeah, so that, that's how I like to start with every interview, because we do have people out there. They're, they have that. I mean, it's just common sense. You're going to have that in the back of your mind, like, Hmm, this is peculiar, right? So here's the thing. Um, we started because we saw the hatred, the vitriol, uh, the looting, uh, the burning of black and brown businesses to the ground. Uh, and most troubling, we saw pastors encouraging their parishioners mm -hmm. to go out and partake with Black Lives mm -hmm. Matter. And so we said, well, this is peculiar. You have, because uh, we had done a little bit of research on BLM. We said, look, you have, a, you have pastors and well-meaning parishioners right. going out with Marxist organization, literally tearing up the streets, looting, burning buildings, everything. And uh, nobody has a problem with this. So um, what we decided to do is we, we wanted to be closely in the same lane, but we wanted to go the exact opposite direction. So we went to BLM's website and we took everything that they stood for and went completely opposite. So we're, you know, uh, you know, pro-life from conception to the grave. We are nice. pro-father, fatherhood initiatives we participate in, school choice. Uh, we are pro-free markets and capitalism. We are nonviolent. Um, and so if you go to, and pro-nuclear family. So if you go to our site, you'll see all the things that we stand for there. And we're the exact opposite. We are the righteous and faithful alternative for BLM. And the reason why we wanted to be closely associated Name wise, but not at all associated uh, from a uh, uh, from an overall philosophy perspective. But name wise is because there's a lot of momentum with the BLM name at that time, if you recall, and mm -hmm. the church was all caught up, you know. And so we wanted to at least give the church an alternative so they didn't have to be caught up with uh, demonism and Marxism coming from BLM. And they can actually have a righteous and faithful organization that would stand for black life. Now, here's the other very, very important thing because I get this uh, frequently as well. Why did you, you know, it's still divisive, every black life, where all lives matter, every life matter. And I say, absolutely, 100%. And that's why our name is what it is. And then people look like, uh, every black life matters, you're still kind of saying that you're better, no. And so that's where we, uh, we help people out. No, we're not saying that every black life matters more than any other life. We're saying all lives matter, mm -hmm. but because, because Margaret Sanger specifically targets black lives. Margaret Sanger, of course, the founder of Planned Parenthood. She said, look, we don't want the word to get out, but we want to fully exterminate the Negro population. That's what she said. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so she said, she said yeah. yeah. And so, um, so what we did is we said, look, all lives matter. But right now, uh, every other ethnicity is being born at this rate while blacks are being born at this rate. We need to mm. illuminate that so people say would see that every black life matters too, T-O-O. -O. 
we should at least be born at the same rate that everybody else is. You should be willing. If you say all lives matter and every life matter, great. You should be willing to stand with us and, and excoriate anything that Planned Parenthood does as they mercilessly target innocent black communities and young black women uh, to, to abort their babies because they're, they're carrying out their, their vision, their model, their dream, which is to exterminate blacks. Absolutely. And I, I think that is a, a wonderful, wonderful idea for an organization and that you guys actually acted upon it is incredible. I mean, I remember, uh, especially back in the, the heat, the probably the height of Black Lives Matter so far, we're probably going to see more waves of Black yeah. Lives Matter and, and more Marxist stuff as it comes about. But, yeah. but, but I remember one church, and this is in the middle of the COVID pandemic, of course, uh, you know, pandemic. Yeah. Um, and the, the, they were out there, they, they had shut their church down for months. Uh, but of course, Black Lives Matter decided that they're going to do a demonstration in, in their neighborhood. And so they said, you know, we can't meet for church because we're, we'll, we'll go and kill everybody with COVID, but we can go and actually serve protesters, well, you know, protesters, uh, pizza out on the streets because that's safe. But it, it's not safe to actually meet for church. I mean, there's an incredible amount of hypocrisy yeah. that started to come with this Black Lives Matter. And, of course, it was all virtue signaling. Yeah. So I'm really glad that you took this on and are actually fighting the real true issues, the real true uh, justice issues yes. that are out there today. And so I, I just really, really appreciate that. And yeah, what is your organization uh, currently doing? Because I know that you've been going out and uh, you've been been speaking um uh, to, anywhere where they let you to let you go speak, you've been going all over the United States. All over so, the United States. So what, what do you guys a, got coming up? And here's here's the main things doing? that we do. Okay, there's a lot of communities right now that are being uh, decimated by uh, rampant Marxism. Call it CRT. <laughs> call it wokeism. Call it whatever. And uh, call it social justice. Call it you know black liberation theology or liberation theology generally. When you when you have somebody like that over the pulpit. And so what we're seeing is people are really becoming disheartened because they're saying, look, my pastor's saying this crazy stuff, my community's mm -hmm. saying this crazy stuff, my grandchildren, when they come home, they ask me, are we white supremacists, are we racist? My children are, have, have rejected me because I have a son and who, who, who married a, a daughter who happens to be of another ethnicity, and she's basically rejected us as as, 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 as a family now because of this Black Lives Matter stuff. So everybody's really feeling it. I mean, you know. And so, right. look, we go around the country and we help people understand what's going on. So what's going on is uh, we help people to, to realize that wokeism, if you think of wokeism as a Trojan horse, and, and, and mm -hmm. what comes out of the Trojan horse or critical race theory, social justice, liberation theology, black liberation theology, transgender, all this stuff comes out of the Trojan horse, right? Right. But the Trojan horse is wokeism, right? And so mm -hmm. uh, what we do is we help people understand in that sort of using that frame that, look, this is what you're fighting against. You're fighting against wokeism generally. And under that umbrella, we have all these other things that are impacting you in different ways, kids, family members, and all this other kind of stuff. So we just want to help you to understand what's happening so you are empowered. You're not powerless. Right now, you're powerless because you don't even have an understanding of what's going on let alone you haven't read about fundamentals of critical race theory. Uh, so you don't really have an opinion about it. You're, you know, you're kind of powerless that way. You haven't really read a whole lot about how they're, you know, basically grooming our children and completely maligning their young minds with transgenderism mm -hmm. and all this other kind of stuff. So you really don't know. And so a lot of these parents don't really understand how this is impacting them. And so when we go across the country, we help empower communities by giving them the absolute facts and truth about what's happening uh, to their family and family members and their community in general. So the entire community can be strengthened and the entire community mm. can grow in faith, can grow in knowledge of how God is working in the season. Because a lot of us, quite honestly, we're thinking, God must have abandoned us because we have some crazy stuff happening. And I don't see his handiwork anywhere. But the reality <laughs> is, is it's everywhere. And so we're this is what we do. We go out and we, we, we call what we do, what we call remnant rising workshops. We'll come to any community across the country and we'll spend a week in there and we'll, we'll do our thing and we'll help empower people to really understand what's happening. Mm. That, that is awesome. And uh, do, do you have any of these remnant rising workshops that are, that are coming up? Uh, yes. So, but not in your area. So let's see, I have, 
uh, I have a couple things in California. I'll be then uh, we have a one day in Phoenix, and then we have uh, you know we'll be in Atlanta, and then uh, it, so nothing like right now that I can really point to that is anywhere near, especially the Midwest. Everything that we're doing is either West Coast. We got a couple of things in DC and Atlanta and that that area, but um, um, oh, and then I do have one in Tennessee. I'll be doing late uh, or mid October uh, in uh, I oh. believe Nashville or Knoxville. So um, well, we, yeah, we will have to get the uh, yeah, we'll have to get the the schedule for for you, and we'll have to get that out to our listeners. Yes, but, uh, I, you, you know you you did write this new book, yes. Woked Up. Yes. And of course, you're going over the same concepts. You're standing for the same truth that we're standing for, the truth of the gospel. I, I, I just had a chance to look over your book a little bit last night. I'm looking forward to reading it all the way through. Um, but I, there, it led me to just a few questions. Yes. And the, the first question that I really wrote down is, so who are the real white supremacists? <laughs> who are the Great real question. white supremacists? Great question. So here's where I started. I said, look, uh, Lord, help me to figure out this woke business. And so when I write, this is my fifth book. When I write books, it's always uh, divinely inspired. I, writing is too hard for me to try to do in my own strength, figure it out. So Holy Spirit just gives me direction and you know, it's a flow. I just do it. And so uh, in this case, uh, you know, I know that Marxism, of course, is is the underbelly, if you will, of, of, of wokeism. So I started with Marx and then I felt divinely mm-hmm. inspired to say, no, uh, that's not where you start. Marx obviously had somebody that heavily influenced his ideology and, his, and that groomed him, if you will, uh, and, and positioned him to be the man that he was with his, his, his ideology. So you need to start with Marx's mentor. And so that would be Charles Robert Darwin. And when I started to peel that onion back, oh, gee, oh, unbelievable. So, and and to think that Darwin is completely infused throughout our academics, K through 16. I mean, he is every right. academic circle. And well, this and guy They, they kind of tried to whitewash him a little bit, oh, too. Oh, absolutely. Uh, but they, they is, tried to take him out. Yeah, he is the taproot of white supremacy, racism, sexism and misogyny, atheism, uh, mm-hmm. uh, mass genocide, and eugenics, all of them from one guy. Now, some yeah, people it, would say- It all fits within that idea. Yeah, yeah. Some people would say, look, uh, come on. From the Garden of Eden, we've had all those things happen. Absolutely. Absolutely right. No, no argument from me on that. But here's the difference with Darwin. Darwin was a well-known well-respected science, scientists, anthropologists, naturalists during that season. And so anything that he would put a label to, and this is all, of course, with his natural selection, evolution stuff, anything that he put a label to had special prominence. So he Mm -hmm. gave white supremacy ontological and anthropological Mm -hmm. existence. Before him, I mean, if you saw somebody from a, a you know, a tribe that you didn't grow up in, you you may have had some feelings about that, or you saw somebody from another ethnicity, another part of the world, you may have feel uncomfortable. But you didn't have the distinction of white supremacy. You didn't have the distinction of racism. It didn't happen until he gave it life. He unleashed it literally as a scientist, a well-known scientist. So so yep. some people would say, okay, well, how exactly did he do that? So here's what he did. And his uh, natural selection book, if you read it carefully, the subtitle, it says, For the Preservation of Most Favored Races. Okay, that's in the subtitle. And then so his mm-hmm. second book is The Descent of Man. In The Descent of Man, he goes into a lot of, of, of detail about how we need to protect the white Caucasian Europeans, you know, because that's the sort of the pure genes, the most intellectual uh you know, that's the he felt that these were the the people who had more capacity intellectually and otherwise creativity and all that stuff. And he says, but but blacks are savages, gorillas, apes and subhuman. So in one fell swoop, he distinguishes wow. white supremacy because whites are supreme and racism because blacks are mm-hmm. subhuman. And, 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 and so in the descent of man, he goes further. So I, I, I told you he was a sexist. He actually unleashed sexism and misogyny. So let me give you a little bit about that. I know we're running out of time, but I just want to mention this real quick. 
because a mm-hmm. lot of women out there are, you know, uh, diehard Darwinist fans. Okay, well, you women, <laughs> diehard Darwinist fans, this is what he did for you. He said, look, yeah. uh, women have a, you know, I've done all the cranial studies. I've looked at the the, the, the brain cavity and cra- cranial cavity of these women. And you know what? Uh, they don't have their cranial, the, the cranial cavity for women is much smaller than that of men. Therefore, they don't have the intellectual capacity of men. And therefore, women can be relegated. Now, remember, this is right around the time that we had Susan B. Anthony, Elizabeth Cady Stanton, Frederick Douglass, all in the women's suffrage movement, trying to get rights for women to vote and to do these basic things. And Darwin throws cold water on all of that and say, yeah, women, wow. you, can, you can relegate them. Now, of course, he, 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 he also talked about uh, racial extermination. And he says, look, some races just don't have the capacity, so it's perfectly okay to exterminate them. And this was the exact justification that Hitler, Lenin, Stalin, Pol Pot, Mao Zedong, all of them pointed to Darwin when they were doing their yep. tragedies. All of yep. them. And so I documented wow. this book, the exact connection quotes everything from these, the worst despots in the history of mankind relied on Darwin's work for justification for exterminating people. Wow. Then him and his now, younger cousin, Francis Galton, I know I'm going to roll here, but one more thing. Him and his cousin, for, Francis Galton, because they, 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 they felt that, now Francis Galton, he was a statistician. He, uh, a premier statistician. So he was really, really good. He was one of the first statisticians, right? So he looked at uh, demographic uh, changes around the world and ethnicities and all that. And he says, look, uh, Charles, my older cousin, Charles, he says, look, Charles, uh, uh, here's the thing. Uh, other ethnicities are really populating a much faster rate than us white Europeans. And we know that we're the ideal prime race that has, you know, all this other stuff going for us. Um, And and what it means, though, is if they're populating more, we're going to have a scarcity of resources. We're going to be squeezed out. And our our pure Aryan, Caucasian, European uh, gene pool is going to be tainted with all these other folks. He says, so 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 they actually concocted out of whole cloth, no scientific justification. They concocted eugenics. They started. Wow. So it was Charles Darwin and his younger cousin, Francis Galton. They said. Because we want to maintain our supremacy, we're going to, you know, launch eugenics, which means well-born. If you're not well-born, guess what? You can be exterminated. You can, and this is where abortion comes from, of course. So we have all of these people uh, who are, you know, hysterical and shrill about, oh, Roe v. Wade. Listen, and and then when you say, no, we don't, we don't need to do that. We. Oh, you're a white supremacist. You're a racist. You know what? You know how you know how ridiculous it is when they realize that what they're promoting is literally white supremacy and racism. That's why abortion absolutely. was limited. Yeah, you know, so, a- absolutely. <laughs> so anyway, oh, yeah. I, I, you know, I, so I'm really excited about this book because it has so many. It, you know, Holy Spirit allowed me to cover so many things and connect all the dots. So after Darwin, then Darwin passed along his theories and all that to Marx. Marx carried it and put the pedal to the metal. And we have what we have today because of Marx, but founded and rooted is firmly in Darwinism. Oh, yeah. Well, there there you have it, folks. I mean, this is this is why you tune into Wikipedia Radio, because nobody else is going to be telling you about this. I mean, this is just incredible stuff to hear about, to hear about how Darwin really has a big root and a foothold and a footprint into wokeism and what is going on today. I mean, this is huge. Mm-hmm. This is this is big stuff. And one of the things that I really appreciated about your book, I really thought was intriguing about your book is that you really went into what Karl Marx said his life goal was. Now, before we get into that, though, we're, we're going to continue this conversation on our podcast. So you need to go and whether you're, you're listening on iTunes, I don't know why you listen to anywhere else, but some of you young people like to go listen on Spotify. Some of you crazy people like to go listen on Google. But you need to go and find Wikipedia Radio Podcast. There are Wikipedia Podcast. You need to subscribe to us. Give us a five-star rating because why would you give us anything less than that? Uh, but we're going to continue this conversation. We're going to pick up with Marx's goal in life. And you're not going to want to miss to hear what it was because it's probably not what you think it is. Well, thank you, Kevin. Thank you for joining us. And uh, we're looking forward to continuing this conversation. Um, anything you want to tell the, the, the listeners here 
Real quick before we uh, we switch over to the podcast. Yeah, so real quick, uh, go visit our website, everyblm.com. You fit, you'll see all our principles there, what we stand for, what we're doing, what we're accomplishing across the country, number one. Number two, please go to the YouTube page to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Y'all Woke Up, W-A, I mean, excuse me, Y-A-L-L, Woke Up, Y'all Woke Up University. Uh, and so there I'm, I'm, I'm doing short, a lot of shorts uh, about current events, give it to you in one minute. Uh, so I keep you updated on the news and how to think about things. And then number two, I have some additional podcast stuff I do, long form, you know, 15 uh, minutes or so and uh, different topics. And so go there and you'll be able, you'll be updated on, on all this stuff and uh, we'll be able to carry on. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us and we're looking forward to having you back on sometime. Uh, but this is all we got time for today. So everyone, thanks for listening. Awesome. Well, thank you guys for listening to uh, that interview. It was a, a great interview with Kevin McGarry. And I mm -hmm. uh, just remember to go in to check out his stuck th stuff there at Every Black Lives Matter. Uh, check that out. Check out his, his YouTube channel, their website, all that fun stuff. But uh, thank you for listening to Equipping the Persecuted Radio. And, and Kyle, where can people contact us? Where can people contact us? They can contact us at contactwokipedia at gmail.com contact wokipedia at gmail.com and if you would like to sponsor the show or you have a ministry that would like to partner with us you can contact us at uh, wokipedia media at gmail.com again wokipedia media at gmail.com we'd love to hear from you either way absolutely so go ahead and email us and tell us how wonderful kevin mcgarry is and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, email us and ask us, you know, where he's speaking next and where you can go see him. Because, I, I mean, if he comes to my area and I'm sure if he comes to your area out out west there, Kyle, are you going to make it out to go see him? I would definitely in a heartbeat. Uh, I would love a chance to hear hear him again. And I would love even more a chance to talk with him again. And if you would like to see mm -hmm. Kevin McGarry back on the show, please comment email, do whatever it takes to contact us and let us know what you think and if you want to hear from him again. Yeah, and and also remember to go and to check out his his book, which by the way, I don't, I don't want to give away too much here, but just a little bit of a teaser. You, you may have an opportunity sometime soon if you're a, a avid listener of Wikipedia Radio to maybe get one of those books. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anything else we should tease about that? Well, I'll just say we've got some exciting things in the work. Again, we need to hear from you of what you would like to see, but we're trying to get some uh, fun things going uh, for you, our listeners. Absolutely. And and speaking of our listeners, thank you for listening to Wikipedia Radio. Uh, we really appreciate it. Wikipedia Radio is sponsored by Equipping the Persecuted. And you can contact us at contactwokipedia at gmail.com. And of course, go to enemieswithinthechurch.com and go over to the right side and see Wikipedia there up top. Click on that and you can find all kinds of great resources to yes. help you out. But thank you so much for listening to this episode of Wikipedia Radio. Keep standing for the truth. 